Hey everybody, it's John from Dora Games, and we're installing motion matching for Unity, which is on the lightning sale, and I'm super excited. So we spun up a new project, and the first thing we're going to do is go to the package manager, and we're going to enable uh, preview packages. Click that checkbox, click the I understand, it's going to eat my babies, and we're ready to go. So the first package we're going to get our hands on is the new input system. It's uh, release 1.10. It's got a whole bunch of new functionality. Um, it's great to use at this point. I uh, probably won't be using some of the older ones I've been using previously. So it's going to reboot the editor. And let's take a look at the first thing we need to install as a prerequisite here. It's burst. Fairly straightforward install. And the next thing we're going to need is jobs. So this time when I look for jobs, you're not going to find it. So we're going to have to manually add it. Um, clicking on that little plus icon, we can add from the URL. And we're going to type in uh, com.unity.jobs, hit add. That will manually install the package. Uh, unfortunately, it's going to kind of kill the package manager. So we have to reboot the whole thing. Um, so let's do that. So we're back in. We can see Jobs has been installed OK. Um, the next thing we need to install is Cinema Machine. Um, I'm just going to install that 3D character and animation package, which has all the things I'm going to need, um, including Cinema Machine. And now we're going to install um, the actual asset, Motion Matching for Unity. Great, it's installed. Put it all in the Plugins folder. And I'm sure the first thing you want to do is jump right into the demo scene and um, give it a, uh, a spin. Unfortunately, because we have the new input system, um, we're encountering a ton of errors. It's not going to work at all. So that's what we're going to fix next. So we're going to get a couple low-hanging fruit here. Um, on the invent system, it's got um, easy uh, conversion there. So I just got to click the button. Good. And the same thing with the Cinema Machine camera. Just click a button. That'll fix it for that one. Great. And now we got a little bit of work to do. So um, what we're going to do is um, add in uh, some a brand new asset. Um, and then we're going to put that in a folder called Settings. Right click. Create. And we're going to add in our input actions. So there's a ton of great tutorials out there. Um, I ran, read through a ton of them. Um, and uh, let's give this thing a name. Let's call it Player Input. Some of those tutorials are referencing older versions of the input system. So just make sure you're getting the latest one there. Um, I think that my instructions uh, will be pretty up to date as of I mean, this current release. So the first thing we need to do is add in a, uh, a new scheme. So what these control schemes do is um, basically uh, are settings for different uh, types of devices. So we're going to do a keyboard mouse initially. Of course, you can have other ones like you know gamepad and things like that. The uh, first device we want to attach to this keyboard mouse is, of course, the keyboard. That's going to be required. Second one's going to be a mouse. I think I'll make that optional. Hit save. Next thing we're going to do is add in a default action map. So action maps are, um, again, collections of actions. So the default is going to be for you know most use cases, but you might have another action map for, let's say, you know driving, uh, when a character is driving, or another one for when uh, they're swimming and that sort of thing. We have default, and we can add in our uh, movement actions. So let's name it movement here. Awesome. And we're going to change it um, from button to value. And from value, we're going to go down to vector 2. And now it opens up that up, down, left, right. Uh, we're going to rename that to uh, WASD. 
and now we can bind um, those different vectors. So up, you can click on path. I usually click listen, hit W, and the same for the rest. Listen, hit D, listen, hit A, yeah, now it's D. Perfect. So that's all um, bound up into that action. I'm going to delete that one. I don't know how that one got there. Great. So that should be ready to go. We're going to hit auto save. So whenever we make a change to these settings, it's going to um, regenerate a class for us and um, and save the settings. So we don't hit the save button anymore. Sometimes you forget to do that. Click that create class. Um, I'm going to keep the default name, and um, I always like to put in a namespace just you know for uh, good coding hygiene. So I'm going to call mine um, Denari Games dot character. You can either not have one or call it whatever you see fit. Awesome. Hit apply. And that will now generate that class, which you saw it do right there. Open it up. Now, generally, we're not going to touch it here uh, in code. Instead, we do it all back in um, you know, the uh, asset setting. So now we're going to click on the robot. And this example demo is what's throwing all those errors. So um, we can open that up because we're going to need that code. Um, we're going to copy and paste it into a brand new component. We'll click on assets and um, you know, again, we'll create a new folder, call that mono. And because of the namespace, I want to create a subfolder called character. And in there, I'm going to put in my uh, script, which is going to be a um, called player input, input manager. That's right, input manager. Awesome. So we're going to add that back to the robot. Oh, whoops, I got to unpack the prefab first. So let's do that. Now we can add it in. Cool, so now we're ready to uh, create our new input manager. So this trajectory um, script has a setting that must be turned on, which is custom input. And that's what we're going to be feeding in with the, uh, the input system um, WASD action that we had just created. So here we are at the default script. Um, I'm going to put in the namespace. It's going to match the same thing that we put in uh, when we generated that auto class. And we can um, delete a lot of this stuff here. Cool. So I know we're going to need um, MXM. And if we look at the um, class, we can see it's in a different namespace. Uh, so we're going to add that one in too. And of course, we're going to need the input system. So now we're just going to pretty much copy all the properties right out of that uh, example script. None of those need to change. We're going to add in one more property, which is, of course, the uh, input script that we named it. Now we don't need equal there. That's wrong. Just like that player input. That's going to name match the name of that class. And now we can copy a little bit more uh, from that example script. So we're going to um, load in uh, that player input on awake. 
and then on enable, we're going to load in our defaults like that, and we're going to unload them or disable them on disable. And again, that's that uh, what we named it in the um, in the settings. It needs to match there. So now we can copy a bunch of things out of this example. Um, we're going to grab start and update. All that as is. Um, now we're going to actually wire in the, um, um, you know, the, the input system. Uh, into the trajectory. So I'm going to do it on fixed update um, and we're just going to set the um, vector input vector 2D. Uh, actually, it's, it's wrong, I think, but we'll go back and change it. Um, update's calling a couple things. This is where all those errors are happening in because it's hardwired for the old input system. So we'll just add in this stub function here called update general. We'll be touching that a little bit later. And we'll grab the rest of these. Um, those are all OK. We'll copy those in. Yeah, so it should be it should be vector 2D capital and it's just a vector 2 for that fixed update. That should now work. Now we're going to we have those new properties that we copied over into our new component. We're just going to copy and Place them over here like that. Make sure we get each one. And now we don't need the um, the demo input anymore. So we're just going to get rid of it. Awesome. Save. Let's try it out. Well, we're still seeing errors, so let's track that down. Well, that's coming from this um, help UI thing. You know, I'm just going to disable that component, and we don't need to debug that right now. Um, so we'll just uh, disable that whole canvas. Try again. Awesome. So there we go. It's working with the new input system. Looks great. So let's add a little bit more um, functionality. So that update general has um, a number of different things here. In particular, we're going to now add in the sprinting. So we're going to go back into the player input settings. We'll add in a new action. Um, we'll call this uh, sprint, of course. And we're going to bind this to the um, left shift key. Same as before, only this time it's a button, um, which is kind of the default. And there's a left shift key bound. That's all we need to do here inside of actions. Go back to our input manager class and um, here inside an update general, uh, we're going to detect that action. So um, if player input default sprint um, was pressed in this frame, then we're going to call a function we're going to create in a second called sprint action. And um, if it was released in this frame, we're going to call the same one, but um, with a Boolean toggle. So we'll put a false in there. So now let's go ahead and add that function in. So private void sprint action with our Boolean toggle. And again, we're just going to now copy and paste um, from the example. Let's grab the first bit here. That's when sprints being enabled. So if enables true, 
then let's paste that in. Excellent. Of course, when we release the button, get the second block here, copy that in. And that should be good to go. Go back and test. Awesome, so now he's sprinting. So pretty simple to add in new actions, as you can see. We'll add one more in, uh, just to kind of prove the point. We're gonna add in um, the jump. And we'll bind this to the uh, proverbial space bar. Again, that's done there. And now that we kind of know how this works, pretty simple. Copy that. We're now looking for the jump event or action. Uh, we need a new function. Call that jump action. There's no Boolean this time. Again, we get to copy and paste from the example module down here. Yep. Fix the intent. And we'll test again. Fantastic. So that's basically it for this tutorial, wiring up the input system with the uh, motion matching. Um, all the rest of the examples follows the same pattern. So have a good night. Can't wait to play with motion matching. Bye.